Hello. How are you guys? Happy Thursday. Sydney. Yay. <laughs> I know. That's how I feel too. <laughs> how are you guys? It's Thursday. I did not think that I would be doing a part three of this dress, but you know, I haven't been as quick as, as usual, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. All right. Well, I forgot to show you how good the inside looked with that flat felled seam. Could have done a little better, but you know, it looks really good. Nice and clean. Look at that. It's just like so sturdy and I love that. I love it when something, even when it looks like, I don't know, I want to say delicate, but even when it just looks like, I don't know, delicate, it's like, totally sturdy. Oh God, Sydney, I'm sorry. I am. Yeah. I feel for folks with small kids. I feel for any folks with any kids. I need to put some lip stuff on. Sorry guys. Hi Serena. Tanya. Hello. How's it going guys? <laughs> My daughter graduates high school today. So excited. <sighs> what a strange time it is, but I am so excited for her and I'm excited to see it. And she's a pretty low key person. So, you know, I know it does look get delicate, but yeah, oh, that little spot. I actually just looked over my waist to see if there's anything I was willing to take out um, and have a back stitch. Cause I feel like I'm going to admit I don't totally kind of rushed this even though it took me a while because I didn't really set it up properly. I didn't plan ahead. Um, I know I could have done some of this better. So I'm sorry if I'm letting anybody down. I feel like all of a sudden I feel like I'm getting a lip boo-boo. How weird. All right. So I feel like I just scraped my lip. I think I'm having an allergic reaction to something. How weird. <laughs> Lies, I won't tell. <laughs> she feels, well, she doesn't really care about the graduation ceremony. Like I've, I've had to kind of gently, you know, encourage her to do it um, and try not to make it just about what I want. Um, she's really excited to be done. It like kind of hit her last week. She's like, wait a minute. I don't have much left. Maybe I should just finish it and I'd be done, done with high school. I'm like, yeah, you'd be done, done. So yeah. <laughs> I'm Sydney. I don't know, Sydney. The whole like one versus more than one thing. You just can't think overthink that. You just gotta do what you wanna do. You know? I am you know, my daughter could have definitely used a sibling many times, but at the same time, we're all very solo people maybe having that kind of sibling dynamic would have been good for us and stretched us in a different way. So you just, you can't have it both ways. So, Hey Terry, I feel like in a way, um, I kind of got a glimpse of both ways because I was raised by a single mom and it was just me and her. I like to say like we grew up together cause she was 20 when she had me and I loved it. I really loved it being just me and my mom. And I know now all the things that she did, for me um, that were well out of her comfort zone, like so far out of her comfort zone, but she really wanted me to have like no diminished experiences because I didn't have two parents, you know? So she would do things that like, I, yeah, <laughs> I would never do, you know? So, um, but then my mom got remarried when I was uh, like 12 and then had my brother and sister. So for 12 years, I was an only child and then I got a brother and sister. So, and I saw them interact as like siblings because they were young and the same age. So, you know, I think, you know, I got to see both. Oh, cool, Tanya. That's awesome. Flat felt seams are kind of fun. And this fabric isn't ideal to do a flat felt seam on, to be honest. So, hey, Eva, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks, Eliza. Yep, exactly, Eliza. You know, it's actually one of the true, like, light, you know, once in a lifetime things, right? So, oh yeah, my mom's super cool, Serena. 
Yeah, she's super cool. She came by the other day and stayed away from me. She's a retired nurse. My dad's a retired firefighter. Yeah. My mom is a, a super enthusiastic person and extremely creative. Like, you wouldn't believe. Um, and, uh, and just, yeah. Yeah, she's pretty cool. She's pretty amazing. <laughs> All right, let's finish these. Okay, so now that I know how to properly sew the button band on, which I thought I did, but then realized, oh yeah, that wasn't the button band I thought this was. <laughs> Mine's super thready. The, I mean, this is the nature of the um, gauze. I could keep trimming it, but it'll just keep shedding off. So I just wait. So I think um, the way I'm going to sew this, I did the shoulders and that's it. And I can, we kind of did those together. And then I fixed it to fit my dress the prop the way it was supposed to be and um we're back at that spot so these seam allowances could be trimmed down a little bit and i think i will just because i don't like that they don't line up with the edge right there that kind of like so <laughs> yay terry what did you get i think you told me a while ago my zip double testing came back yesterday so I'm going to kind of review that. I'm going to enjoy the graduation for the rest of the day after the stream today, though. I mean, not that we're doing anything, but I don't know. I just want to be around her and stuff. She probably wants to be around her friend, but <laughs> she and um, one of her closest, her she pretty much only has one person she hangs out with. And she, he and her both distanced for like 14 days solid. Like they didn't see anybody else. They didn't see each other except like six feet apart in cars. And then on the like 15th day, she was like, can we go in the same car now? It, so that was kind of cool. She's super responsible that way. And she's no, she's seen like all of our other friends, friends, you know, not doing that, you know, like hanging out in big groups, taking graduation pictures. And she's just like, ugh. In fact, she got into apparently a, <laughs> a little tiff with someone on Twitter. <laughs> Today's kids, right? <laughs> And he went, oh no, and, and, oh no, that's not what it ended up being. I thought that's what it was. They told me at first that they thought this kid that she and other girls had gotten into a tiff with on Twitter had egged our, the houses. Apparently it wasn't him, it was someone else, these two other gals. So our house got egged the day before. I mean, I was like, you're kind of missing out on seeing your prank thing. She was just like, <laughs> Eva, <laughs> yeah. What'd you learn, Eva? <laughs> I know, Eliza, right? This fabric's really fun. Oh, Fairfield button up. That's right. Ooh. Yeah, Sydney, she is. I mean, it's not easy being that age, though, and, and being responsible, though. You know what I mean? That is not the, uh, the norm of peer. But I think anything she thinks of with peer, she just thinks, Ugh. Please. So she's really into hiking and stuff. She's been uh, exploring. Like she knows the county so much better than I did and um, really loves to go on hikes and stuff. Uses a trail app and stuff. All right. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to sew the um, neckline edge, the perimeter edge, the one that's on the furthest, like the edge of the button band, that edge first. So it would be the inner curve there. I'm gonna sew that, that together first. She says to sew it to the dress first. And um, I, I have to admit, like my least favorite kinds of pattern pieces are long, narrow pieces like this. And I just kind of want to get them secure and get this facing looking nicer than it does right now with all these threads. And then I'll feel better about attaching it to the dress. I really want to make sure these two pieces are identical as well. You know what I mean? All right, I think what I'm gonna do is sew from the top down to make sure. So, you really laugh out of that? <laughs> That's so funny because I feel like I've learned a little bit about my bottom this year too, and I'm like, when did I get this? <laughs> yeah, it's true, Serena. All right, so half inch seams. I almost did that at a quarter. So I'm just gonna do it around so basically I'm just going to assemble this button band so that it's one thing and then I'm going to attach it to the dress. I should have pressed open these seam allowances. 
that. I'm going to press the heck out of this thing when it's all done. I just used a poplin interfacing. I did not use a fusible. It'll kind of make it still stay drapey because of the gauze, um, but it'll also give it some stability without adding too much bulk or stiffness. All right. So because one of them doesn't have that, it's a little stretchier. So that's kind of why I want to go from the top down on both sides and make sure I get them the same. Look at all these threads, man. I don't really want them in there. And I also had to piece things together. Man, I'm so low on supplies. How about you guys, you know? I'm really going to need some stuff. And I the two places I want to purchase things are getting really low. I don't want to immortalize these threads. I did uh, trim a little bit off my center front edge. I'm going to lay this one here. This doesn't even look that straight right there where I pieced it. All right. I hate fiddly stuff like this. It's just my own little thing, you know? I don't know about you guys. I'll start rationalizing. I'll be like, well, they both match, you know, so they must be fine, you know, even though I'm kind of like easing one into the other. <laughs> Sydney, I just mean like, um, like the, the nuts and bolts, you know, like interfacing or poplin. I did not get my spoon flower order because um, I was making a surprise. I didn't get it in time. I wish I would get it today, but it didn't even ship. So that's kind of a bummer. Some of the things I had. I, I actually, if I got it by Saturday, it would be fine, but it hasn't shipped yet. So that's kind of a bummer. They're really impacted. I used to always get things so quickly. All right, so I'm not going to try and ease that all in there. Look at that. What is it doing that? Do you see that? Why was it doing that? Oh my god, threads. Look at this. It's just threads. I swept yesterday. It'll be look like it'll look like a hedgehog had a haircut. A quill cut. Alright, so now I'm gonna go down this side. What do we think of that seam allowance? Why is that why is my thread pink right there? It's really weird. Oh I see. It's because of the top one. Alright, that's fine. <laughs> what are you going to make, Eliza? Pulling out some threads there. All right. <laughs> oh my god this stuff man <laughs> you know I have a feeling it's because these are probably cut on the other grain line because I didn't have enough and um, that's why because so sometimes you know uh, the length grain will be threadier than the cross grain or vice versa I actually can't think which it is, but. All right. I 
think I'm going to put this on the ironing board and, and trim it with my rotary mat. Hey, Louise. How crooked that is. I think I'll give myself some space to straighten that out right there. I like to think I'm a pretty straight sewist, but I'm really not. I feel like when I hesitate, you know, in between, it's a little puckery right here. Actually, let's trim this other edge right now. Giving my hedgehog a haircut. Let's do it from this side so I can see better. So is um, anyone going to do anything for Memorial Day in the States? I never really like celebrate it, celebrate it, but um, it seems so weird that it's a supposedly a three day weekend. <laughs> okay. I think they've opened up some of the uh, camp places around here at camping. We're near some pretty big um, places like this is so narrow right here. I'm going to try and split the difference. Like Lassen and Shasta. Hedgehog haircut. See if I can see chat. A little bit, let's see. Oh, linen for pants. I mean, if they're looser, <clears throat> looser, then they won't get stretched, you know? Ooh, <laughs> Eliza. <laughs> Hi, late night. How's it going? Trying to read chats, chats here. Yeah, time is so weird right now. Yeah, I know what you mean. May is always such a busy month for us, too. It's weird to think like, oh, this looks terrible. I'm not going to even pretend like it doesn't, but it's pretty skint on the fabric. Hoping that I can kind of smooth over things. So 
So I'm just um, pressing the seam towards the other side as if I'm about to understitch it, but I'm actually going to edge stitch it. I'm not going to understitch it. Um, I'm just using this to get a really nice crisp edge there. The gauze is so stretchy. I didn't think of it as stretchy until I have to handle this one narrow piece, you know? And when I did the waist seam, definitely noticed it a little bit there. All right, getting there. Where's my seam? water. I usually use my teapot. Did I tell you guys my whole fiasco with getting water here? <laughs> I went to fill up my thing because I don't have like a, a water in my office so I have like a you know a dispenser and um, I get the bottle refilled and they, they've shut all those off. So I've been using our kitchen one to fill it which takes a little bit <laughs> and then um i had this leftover so because that's what i was kind of living on was this one gallon that's right sydney we do have that choice right we're going to my parents on sunday Looking forward to seeing them. Okay. I lint rolled my uh, mat this morning. It was so satisfying. Now the reason I'm, I'm <clears throat> not that you're wondering, but I am like making my whole placket here as if it's done because like I, you know, like, like I'm folding it and pressing the edge. I know it's not attached to the garment yet, but I actually didn't want to just sew one side of it to the garment and then sew the other side. Maybe if my fabric had been more stable and I had cut them out at the same time. Cause remember, I didn't see that you needed to cut two each of these, two left front, two right front, and two back neck. Um, therefore, I was still confused of how this button band was sewn on. And then I noticed, oh, wait a minute, I'm supposed to cut two of each, okay. And then I figured it out, right, that it's an extension. It's a button band <laughs> extension. So um, I had to piece my pieces together to get them to be the same. Otherwise, I didn't even have enough hedgehogs to make, like, the underlayer, the hedgehogs. So um, because of that, because it's gauze, because it's been kicking around in my shop for a week, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that they're identical. Because if I would have just like attached one side, you know, one, like the outer one to the garment, and then the other one, what if they had been off? What is this thread? Look at this thread, like, it's like stuck in a stitch there. Um, and then that's when you kind of can get some wonkiness. If these two pieces are going to live together, one on top of the other forever and ever, let's make sure they're the same before we make them do that, you know? So. Oof, yeah, wrap tops and me, uh-uh. I am so Rubenesque. Wrap tops, people ask me when when my due date is. It is it's a different kind of wrap top for me that I have to do so the one I don't look pregnant. You know what I mean? Wait, is this supposed to be straight right here or is this the... Oh, okay, good. <laughs> There's a little whoop. 
That's where the center front is. And then the next thing I would do after this is make sure that this is the same width. And we'll do that. I'm gonna trim it. Sorry, I thought my phone was off. I think sometimes when you have these pieces like this, this button band, where it's, it's kind of its own creature, that you need to kind of make sure that this creature is, you know, the same front and back and sideways before you attach it. But if you had maybe cut your dress out correctly and maybe in something like a poplin or something a little more stable and you were really consistent with your seam allowances, I don't think that this is, is critical doing this. But I do like sewing it like in this way too. So now I'm just gonna go through and make sure it's the same. So let's look for the narrowest width. One and five eighths. I think I think I can get away with one and five eighths. And so now Right, just make sure. Look at me being a good girl. <laughs> Witness it. Doesn't matter that I may be trimming off in, in a couple places I'll probably be trimming off more than these little shavings. In fact, I wanna make sure I'm actually, so I could probably do a little better, maybe go a little narrower, because look at that, that seam kind of pulled it in and made it a little smaller there. Maybe I could go like right here. What's that gonna be? That's one and a half. So now the thing is like, yeah, say I start losing some of the width of my button band. I have a half inch seam allowance to play with. Like I always put this on at three eighths of an inch. So I think that's what I'll do. I'm gonna do an inch and a half just to make sure. often do take this time to do things like this but it actually is kind of the way I would do it I sometimes think like people will think oh that's just too much effort and then later on I'm like I don't care you know like, that's what I'll do um, and I get a better result This lumpy, bumpy uh, rotary mat is kind of a pain. It goes up right here. I don't know if you can see it. I think my smaller blade would be a better choice right now. Sorry, I can't see chat that well, you guys. Looks like you guys are chatting. Shorter ruler would be nice too.
I always forget, if I put all the ruler above, and I just use this little bit down here, it's like having a short ruler. Except that there's some things over there my ruler's getting hung up on. I'm glad I went to that one and a half width. All right, I'm getting down there. We're gonna have a really nice button band. It's a focal point, you know, so. Might as well take this time to get it perfectly symmetrical. Oh, Eliza, right? Menopause. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, Eliza. Um, I had audio credit credits, Megan, so I got it um when it came out. My sister got it from Barnes and Noble. So, and I think she did get some sort of deal. She had a sticker too, which she was kind of, you know, I don't know. Yeah, Terry, it's not overkill. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So this is my one that's pieced here. So I want to put this one facing out. So I'm going to do like what I always do. And I'm going to go from the inside of the garment to the outside. Um... And that is this one here. I'm going to sew it to inside of your garment. And I need my there we go. Okay, which one's the center back? This is it, right, right here, right here. Let's hang that down right there. I push it that way, I did. Let's get these little threads to the neckline. Oh, it came with a poster too, Megan, cool. Have you started it? I don't want to spoil anything, you know? We're My sister and I are kind of doing an unofficial, you know, like, book club type of thing with each other. So, um, that's kind of fun. It's so funny because I have to admit, we're, we were a little snarky on the whole concept of this book. And, um, and it's kind of fun to be kind of, like, snarky about something that's, fantasy you know because there's so much to be snarky about right now in the world and we're just totally piling on I finally was like we're really hating on this book but I'm kind of enjoying it she goes yeah me too <laughs> but um the the um and we, the, and we were whoops did I just do the wrong oh yeah yeah I did. Oh, here we go we um for me like and I know a lot of you don't even know this book it's the the newest book in the Hunger Games thing which I actually really love those books I love the the whole 
any kind of book that's like justice and rising up people and when there's people that band together that kind of thing I really I really get into you know like I mean it's obviously like Harry Potter is very much like that and um, there's a few other books like Ready Player One I love that I love it when people band together you know to take out something that's evil and oppressive I don't know why <laughs> I mean obviously there's obviously good reasons to like that but at the same time it's just the kind of thing that I really get into and um you know, I was like, okay, now I don't have any notches here. Um, I don't like it, though, when I, like, years later, an author or a TV series or whatever wants me to be sympathetic for bad guys. It makes, it's very manipulative to me. I've told you guys about this. It's my own little thing. You know, like, I liked the Sopranos until I just didn't like the Sopranos. I was just like, you know what? At the end of the day here... I'm not pulling for some really nice people here, and I, I don't really like that feeling. It's very confusing for me. Um, and I'm not even like a full-on goody two-shoes. I'm just kind of a medium goody two-shoes. So so that, so that was my first beef with it. Because he's kind of the... It's, in, it's told from the perspective of someone really evil in their whole world, you know? So, And it's his, like, upbringing. I'm like, great, now we're going to feel sympathy for him, you know? So, um... Yeah, it's, it's uh, so far so good. It's fun being back in that world, and it was kind of nice, like, when I was still had, a, like, a fever, and I was just laying there in bed, and kind of like, ugh, I was just laying there listening to it, you know? All right, I wish I would stay stitched to the center front here. I wish I still had my notches, to be honest. That would be really helpful right now because I don't trust anything as far as like the length goes. I, I don't really have an anchor, you know, like I don't have like a waist notch and I don't under, I don't uh, trust where my hem is going to line up to the dress. Plus, I know it's supposed to be a little longer because of the way she sews it. So I'm just going to kind of put this together gently. Oh yeah, Allison, that's interesting. Allison, did you test the zip double? I think I just saw your zip double. I finally got to see everybody's yesterday. I was so exciting. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> I think uh, people growing up would have called me a goody two shoes, but I think people closest to me know that I mean, I am when you're talking about things like, you know, do you do drugs? Do you drink? Yeah, I just don't do any of that, but I don't know. I just don't like the way I feel. That's all. It's not because I think it's wrong, bad, whatever. That's not my reasoning. I just don't. All right, let's see here. Just putting a few pins in here. This is always lovely when you come across all that. <laughs> Watch the other one will hang way off. <laughs> it's okay though. It's okay. I imagine this dress, I could probably should try it on to find the length of it. I imagine I can make it shorter um, than it is. Too long and I don't know. I like things... I don't like things short, but I don't like things below my knee at all. I think it's a, a weird proportion for me. It looks a little too dowdy on me. Makes me look square, you know. Is it, Megan? Have you tried my local fabric store? Because I'll bet I may be the only person who's bought it. <laughs> they don't sell online, but you can just give them a call. I'm pretty sure a couple of them know I'm making something in it right now because I've seen a couple of them comment. Um, at least one of them comment or like it, so they would know the fabric and they can they know who I am. It's by Moda Double Gauze. 
And, that, and they're Honey Run Quilters in Chico. All right, let's see here. Uh, I think I'll do the same thing I did on the other side, or when I sew this together, I'll, oh look, I got the same mess. I love it when I get the same mess. Consistent mess. <laughs> Honey Run Quilters. Or, oh, you know what? Um, that is what they're called, right? Yeah. Yeah, right, Terry? Yeah, exactly. And I'm not tall. I'm like almost 5'5", five, five, maybe. All right. Well, maybe I will just... I'll just start this down here. I think it'll be fine since I got kind of a consistent mess down there. You know what? I was already supposed to have hemmed my dress and I haven't done that yet. Uh, so I'm just going to start a little bit above this and figure that out. I, you know, and I'm sorry, I, this is just kind of how I do things. I could have just done it the way she had it, but I just kind of, just kind of do it the way it'll make sense to me. And so this at a three eighths inch seam allowance. So that makes my button band, um, where's my little clear ruler, you guys? Hmm. Let me sew a little more and I can measure it with my tape here. Yeah, and if you look up Honey Run Quilters and you find it, and it says Kathy's Sewing Back, that's the same place. They're inside there. It's about an inch and a quarter wide. Thought I was doing a 3 8 seam and then it just kind of wasn't. I did check to make sure my um, center front, uh, like the waist seam and the hem and all that was the same side to side. Um, and I, how I did that was I laid my dress, the whole front, I lined it up from the shoulder all the way down. I kept it as relaxed as I could because it's really easy when, you, when you're when you like kind of lining up the dress here along this curve. This curve is a little stretchy on the dress. So I just tried to line them up together, right sides together, keep it relaxed, laid it on my table and just to see if my lengths matched up. And um, I also was kind of truing my hem because I noticed that there was a little bit of uneven side seams. So I wanted to make sure I trued it up, so. And they were actually pretty good. So here's this little curve. Let me walk around it a little bit. Oh, you know, one thing I forgot to do is uh, notch my this edge here. I will do that. If you have trouble getting this, I just got a tuck. I just got a tuck. Um, if you have trouble getting this little back neck curve to the neckline, you can um, stay stitch it first. She recommends clipping it and. Um, if you feel really comfortable with that, I would clip it, but I think that that's, I wouldn't clip it. It makes me very nervous to clip something prior to sewing it. Um, but you can see, like, see how this, this curve's going this way and that curve's going that way, right? And so she would recommend putting a stitch line right there, just inside your seam allowance and then clipping it. And then that way this would relax, right? They would open up and then you could splay it out. And um, it would be a little easier, especially if you put this on top of that. 
but um, I get a little nervous pre-clipping because uh, you may not, when you go up to that clip, catch it. And then you'd have a hole right there and you'd have to keep kind of sewing it and making sure you got it in there. Um, but like I said, if you're fine with that, go for it. I think it would be a lot easier probably to sew this from the other, not from the facing. I did it from the facing side because it's a smaller piece and it seemed like it would be easier to manipulate it, forgetting I had these neckline curves. It's for a short distance, you can handle it. And I sometimes do this, I like put the garment like this, I'm pulling it up in the air like this, and it kind of helps get around these weird little curves like this, especially if the top one is the outer curve and the bottom one's the inner curve. So, hey Ray, how's it going? Oh, cool. Sydney's all about that Google. <laughs> See here, I'm gonna actually, I'll lift it up and then we'll go from this side and I'll show you, it's a lot easier. Look at that, I was getting a little bit off in my seam allowance anyway. So let's just take this out right here. Go about up to here. I'm doing three eighths since I trimmed my button band. So see how that folds away. This will be a little easier now. I can kind of lay it on there. See that, so much easier. You don't need to clip it first. Let's look it over, make sure I didn't get any tucks there. It's pretty good. All right, so let's clip my um, neckline here, So I forgot. Oh, these little scissors are vicious. <laughs> I'm a little nervous to uh, clip my neckline with these things. They are sharp. Bammed. <laughs> oh, I bet this is so satisfying to watch. That's how sharp they are. You, if you know, you know. I'm only doing the interior curves. And then um, I'm gonna look at these down here. It's pretty gentle. It's easy to kind of stay away from where your seam allowance, especially if your seam allowance is wide and you don't clip that, but it's good. Even if you just clip it, like go under that seam allowance and clip it right there, you know? I trimmed down my seam allowance, so it's it's kind of close. Did I just clip? Oh my god, I thought I clipped my facing. Let's get rid of these pins here. All right, and so now we're going to. Did, what, did I stop? Oh yeah, I stopped because I showed you that. <laughs> Megan, yeah. God, I stopped to flip it over and do that curve with you. Yeah, these would make really nice pajamas. Double gauze is kind of nice that way. I see a lot of folks make pajamas out of it. It is pretty light and airy. And it's 100% cotton, which is really nice. You get sweaty I have an elephant so I don't get sweaty you've heard about my elephant
I'm going to unpin this because I it's matching perfectly, but I actually want to make sure I'm not, it's not like, I don't know, I just want to kind of pull on this and make sure it's not. It looks puckery to me over here, and I think it's just the, the gauze, you know? Patty, how's it going? Great for hot summer weather. Yeah, totally. Oh, iron. There we go. I'm like, wait. I'm already on that one. Patty, I'll ship your stuff out. I think I can ship it today. It's pretty much ready. I gotta fix that right there. Sorry, I'm so quiet, you guys. And you guys think I don't need music. one long facing. Oh, uh, let's see, Patty. So it is a... Um, it's not a facing, it's actually a button band. So you sew, I'm sewing the button band from the inside of the garment to the outside, so it'll look like this when I'm done. So you see, I sewed it to the inside of the garment. And then I've actually been taking great care with it and I trimmed it so that it was perfectly uh, parallel and the same width all the way. And now I've attached it to the garment. I'm about to clip into it. I'm gonna fix this right here. Because I picked it up and um, turned it over and sewed from the other side to show how much easier it would have been to sew it from the other side because of the curve right there. Um, now I'm going to clip that curve and I'm going to iron it um, so that I can now clean finish it and finish my hem at the bottom and then we're done. So that's where we're at. looking for where to clip this. I'm 
And this is the back neck right here. It's why I'm flipping this curve. I'm doing this a little different than the instructions. I assembled the band first, then I put it to the dress. Whereas in the instructions you put, I'm pretty sure the outer band on first. I think that's how it is. I, I might be wrong about that. And then you do the other one to it and do your finishing. So yeah, you're all caught up. I haven't been doing much besides that. All right, where's that spot that I keep saying here it is right here? Cause see, look at this. This is where I kind of, I came around. I think I was on this side, stopped and I was like, let me show you how to do it from the other side. And I picked it up like right over here and went this way. But if I didn't, and I smoothed out that rough seam allowance there, but I need to pull that out because otherwise it does this little pucker right there, which you you know isn't very visible from the outside, but it would always make you, every time you ironed it or whatever, you'd be like, what's up with this spot? Because it's not obvious what it is. All right, now let's iron. Ironing board would probably be a little more useful in this case. So now we have our facing. Yeah, I still need to deal with the hem. But yeah, it's gonna this, 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 like that. And press this toward the, the button band. I keep calling it a facing, it's a button band. Like a button band extension. External button band. I'm trying to think what would be the technical term for this. But it is an extension, and I think that's where I went, uh, got confused. I think that that word would have helped me tr trigger that it was, it stuck out past the center seam. You know? Look at this. I just trimmed, you saw me trim this whole edge. <laughs> I need some pins. Are you making all those things out of the hedgehogs, um, Megan? Or you just mean like those are the things you've got going on? I mean, you know, I'm all about all the hedgehogs, but people will think uh, you don't own any other, other fabric. <laughs> So I'm doing, especially when I'm doing these kinds of like, okay, the this fabric doesn't have the stabilizer on it, the other one does. It does um, sometimes get a little tricky. You'll feel like you have to ease it in there. So you just be really gentle with it. The other layer is a little more fixed. I really need to deal with the hem. I don't know why I'm pinning this right now. I'm just a little eager. Let's just press it. I'm very focused today. Sorry, guys. 
Sometimes this is uh, how it is, right? So when you're doing these kind of double layer things, it's good to kind of check, make sure you don't get any bubbling like this, you know, or um, so, you know, making sure this layer is flat. I always look for these like landmark spots like the shoulders. I would have preferred my stabilizer be on the top layer. It's not, it's not a... Uh, required it's just traditional to do that um, and sometimes I don't because I don't want the whatever I'm stabilizing the fa fabric that everyone's gonna see I don't want that to like change the texture or the look of it um, but you know it would probably be a little easier if it was the opposite so now if you have trouble turning under an edge like this, you can run, like I was saying before, the, the stay stitch around there, the edge where you're going to turn it under. does make it a lot easier. Um, then you just need to make sure you hide your stay stitch edge when you go to stitch it down. But you could stitch it and then it'll fold right along it pretty easily. Kind of about fixing to do that right now myself since I know I need to finish the hems anyway. Let's just iron this and I'll do that. It's more fun and we have plenty of time today. And sometimes you just gotta do what you know will be more successful. You know, the ensure success thing, as far as I'm concerned. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm not in a hurry. And I know this sounds kind of weird, but in a way, in for me, it's the, I don't want to say this word and it be misconstrued, but it's like, it's more the, actually, I know what I'll say. It's the more relaxed way to do it. If I'm just kind of like, I just kind of want to somewhat mindlessly do whatever I'm doing, I will do extra steps so that I can relax while I do it. And one of those would be to um, ed uh, stay stitch this edge, which I'm about to do. I think I am having a allergic reaction. That happens to my lips sometimes. I don't know why. Usually it's on the inside. All right. Move pin cushion. All right, let's do my hems really quick. And that's my shortest. If I did that, that would be fine. All right, so um, I was just thinking maybe I should iron the hem. <laughs> but I'll just do it. It's pretty straight. There's not a lot of curve. I just trimmed it. Can you tell? Right before streaming. If you have a serger, Megan, you might enjoy sewing this with a serger. <laughs> not yet, Eliza. I'm going to. I'm going to hem this first. I'm gonna do a little bigger. I'm doing things a little out of order, you know. I'm gonna do the hem and then that way I can just do the band. Cause I should have done the hem already. I get a little eager. You know, it's this is one of those cases where you do the hem before you do the um, band and I didn't do that. So my fault. All right, fine, I'll iron this. <laughs> Might as well. So I can make sure it's even. The the double gauze is just so like foofy, you know. Even if I just do that, that will help me a lot. My side seams are pressed forward, remember, because of my pockets. 
If I if this is probably a different fabric, I might have even like uh, stitched them down. But I I, have, I fear that even um, even with the perfect tension, sometimes my machine, once this is washed, I don't know if it's my thread or the machine, but it draws things in. Sorry, there's a big old truck out there. Oh, it's not a big truck, it's just one of the trucks. I mean, this hem goes like this. And look, at it doesn't look like it. That's how pliable the gauze is. <laughs> that makes me a little like, hmm, is that going to hang right? I literally looked at it before the stream, though. Okay. Now we're going to check our center front, especially the skirt. I'm just going to focus on the skirt since I checked my front. And um, there's not a, um, the center front neck isn't like squared off like this. It's a gentle slope. So it's a little easier. You have a little leeway when you're trying to find if your fronts line up. go this isn't a very uh, exciting stream today is it <laughs> I'm excited because I'm getting a head hog dress but you know kind of want to go all the way like this and fold it in there and I probably will and uh, that is just an effort to get it to wrinkle the hem to wrinkle less So I think I'm gonna fold this all the way to the fold line like this. I think when you fill up a hem like this, it has a tendency to lay flatter after washing. I kind of experiment with this a little bit sometimes. And I do have one double gauze dress and uh, the hem is the only thing I really need to iron. probably don't even need to do this. I could probably sew it since having that guideline of going right up to the fold makes it a lot easier. do it at the machine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a uh, intersection, but it's not even like that close to my office. <laughs> but because I'm on a creek, um, the sound travels really easily. I drove uh, today downtown, kind of near downtown. It's the first time I've been down there since the stay-at-home thing. I mean, it's three miles away. It's not like downtown is a big deal. But I just mean, like, I really haven't um, gone anywhere. And I was. it felt really weird. I felt like, like I pictured downtown and the rest of the town, you know? Like, I, like I... 
but just being there all of a sudden it was like really hit me like wow I have not been here in a long time and there were so many people and you know driving probably going to work or something that I was kind of like oh Sometimes I wish I had more table right here. Get all those threads. I can't wait for all these threads to be secured. The gauze is certainly <laughs> thready. I'm trying to be really, like, keep it really light and fluffy. Yeah. Did they do the bias to the inside of the dress, Terry, or um, you mean on the edge? I actually made, made a conscious effort when I first started the stream to not do a bunch of binding finishes because I knew that that wasn't what people really do. Um, but all the things I made before streaming had a, had a bias hem. I just like having that little bit of a color hit right there. And mine would be double fold to the outside most of the time, but there are some that I would do to the inside. My only tip, Terry, is make sure you pre-wash that because it shrinks differently and it and it does something weird because what will happen is the um, binding will wrinkle and then it pulls the dress in. You know what I mean? If you're doing it as a facing, if you're doing it um, bound on the edge, you'll find that it kind of draws in a little bit. So just be aware of those things. That's cool, Megan. Like one of the, like the clover things. the inside yeah it looks really nice and you can do it a little narrower like I'm always using one and three eighths inch wide but when you do it to a hem you can just cut it like one inch wide and you'll get even more binding yeah it's such a nice it reminds me of um, how things were sewn by my like grandmother because they used to use seam tape you know I know someone in here is going to be like, oh yeah, I remember seam tape. And uh, when I was learning to sew and I was around um, like women not from my school or whatever, um, especially like at the fabric store I worked at, this, that's probably where I came in contact with a lot of these gals. They started just, it started kind of disappearing on the shelves. It wasn't being used as much. And um, some of the, you know, sewists, you know, like experienced sewists were like, where's this stuff? And I also started learning, you know, about it from my coworkers too. And they'd be like, wait, you didn't use seam tape to finish your uh, hem. And I, and so I had to learn about that. And it sometimes it was often lace. Sorry, I'm having this, I have this weird little lip right here. And I think it's that it's, um, ironed crooked. I don't want to, I don't want to take it out because I don't want a back tag right here. So I'm going to risk cutting a hole in my dress instead. That makes sense, right? There we go. And you would, you would like, it would be in that section by the thread. Um, 
there'd be all the biases, you know, and there'd be seam tape too. Is it there? It, it can, yeah. You just make, make sure that when you do it, um, you the, the fabric is pre-washed because this is where I would go wrong. I would be making my dress really quickly, like at the end of the day, after sewing all day at Chicken Boots or whatever, and be like, dang it, I really want to make this dress. I've had it cut out for weeks. And I would try and do it, and then I'd be like, ooh, I could bind it. And all the binding I had, which was like, you know, 70 different bindings hanging around, um, none of them had been pre-washed because they were for the production. And so that's what I recommend is even if your binding's already cut, um, just put it in like a bag and throw it in the washing washer and dryer, however you're going to treat the garment. And the other thing is, when you're applying the binding, don't stretch it too much because it will draw in the hem of your garment. You can iron that out and you can stretch it a little every time you wear it, but if you don't have to do that, it's easier. So, <laughs> bias and hem tape. Um, well, it could be the same thing, but like the hem tape I remember seeing, yeah, I remember this a long time ago, it was lace. It was like this, um, uh, probably five eighths inch wide lace and it came in all different colors and that's what people would hem. I actually don't know how it worked. I, I can't, I don't think it was fusible because fusible things were kind of new. <laughs> um, and then things like Wonder Under came out and there'd be like thin Wonder Under where you would like slip it between your two layers of your hems and iron it. Oh my gosh, that was like dirty. <laughs> to do that. <laughs> I didn't think so, but that's what, the, you know, you would hear people like, oh, you know, so. All right, so I've hemmed my dress. Um, remember, I made sure that it was the right size. And then um, now I, oof. Come on. And then uh, I can um, go across my, here, let's I'll just finish this off now. Now that I know, I thought I made this plenty. Give myself a quarter inch seam there, but it's looking a little like, oof, oof. Oh, that's just so close. Okay, I can't do it. It's too close. Dang it. Could I? No, I don't trust this gauze. Sorry. Arr. You don't rem Did you not sew? How long have you been sewing, Eliza? You'll see it sometimes if you inherit someone's um, sewing stuff. If they've passed away or they were elderly and they just pass it on you because they're not doing it anymore. That's awesome, Sandy. Yeah, I'm sure the stuff still exists. You know what I mean? Um, and maybe it's still like, oh yeah, that's still like being used all the time. I just, you know, you don't see it. I, I don't even know how you did it. But I feel like what it did was you could... Um, cover up the raw edge of your hem. Because remember, this is also in a time when having a serger at home would have been a full on freaking luxury and a very expensive thing to have, you know? I begged for a serger as a gift. Did I beg? I, I think my mom actually bought it for her and then kind of I ended up with it. Uh, but it was $800, I remember, which at the time was a lot of money. <laughs> and um, very basic, too. Didn't It was so hard to use. Uh, the threading was so hard to use. All right, let's see if I can kind of make this hem a tad bit more. Just trim off a little bit. Oh, my gosh. Nope, I, I can't cut straight. If you've ever wondered. <laughs> yeah. Seam tape versus bias tape. Yeah, hem. 
I don't know. I, I actually don't know, Eliza. I, I think in my head, because I don't really know, I get them confused, you know? They weren't something I learned to use even from my sewing teacher in high school, and she was pretty old school. So it's not to say that she didn't suggest it or go over it. Uh, I don't remember it though. And I, I, was, I was kind of a snarky kid. I didn't want to learn to sew. I thought it was girly and um, yeah, I'm not proud of how I thought of it then. I just definitely didn't want to be treated differently just because I was a girl and I didn't want to get into a class just because of that. I wanted more options for, um, you know, electives, and there just weren't any. I had already taken the others. I already taken typing as one of them. I mean, come on. You know? Typing. They don't even have that, do they? All right, here we go. All right, so we have that, and then now we can... So this facing right sides together and I'm gonna cut this off so I can see where I'm sewing like that. Now I think it's good to make sure you're kind of doing this at a, you know, you're continuing your hems direction of a line. Like making it a nice smooth transition. And see, I just went straight across right there. Fabric is definitely a little wonky because I think I need to pull that down a little bit. Let's see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what am I wearing now? Um, Hawthorne. The Hawthorne dress. My husband even said, I really like that dress on you. I love it. I mean, I, it's, a, uh, it's, I remember when I sewed it shut and then right before stream, I was actually sewing the buttonholes shut even further. Cause man, this thing, it's just like, no matter what, it just pops open and I, I've sewn it shut. So it's secure. But when you see a button unbuttoned, it'll, it's a little disconcerting. You know, you're like, <laughs> The buttonholes look so nice on this too. So it's kind of a bummer. They aren't too big. They just, um, I think the fabric is so lightweight that it makes the buttonhole go like this constantly, you know? Yeah, right? Organs, yeah. Yeah, see that sounds really familiar to me. All right, let's do it from this side. Let's make sure this is all nice and flat like this. In fact, we'll just put a nice little pin right here. My hem looks like it's going up, which um, freaking annoys me. All right. There we go. There we go. All right, let's get rid of all these threads. Let's trim all this off here. Trim this corner. Make sure you secure your corner because you just cut off one edge that may have had the back cut. And now your hem should line up with your um, skirt hem like that. And then this will get turned in there and it'll all be beautiful. Let's do the other side. Let's do it 10 times faster than that one. these threads you guys it's drowning in them <laughs> I was one of those good kiddies Eliza what are you talking about <laughs> I did band I did Spanish I did typing I did home ec cooking um
something else. You guys, I took the electives. There just wasn't enough. I almost took auto shop because they had that. And I just honestly just didn't want to be in there with the people that were in there, you know. So, yeah. And they had put me in home ec early on and I was like, no. <laughs> I was kind of a brat. But, you know, you have to remember I was pretty academically oriented and I uh, well, I did journalism too and the, the school newspaper for a few years. I just, uh, it's kind of weird. You know, I've been watching that show Miss America and um, I find it really interesting thinking about my own attitudes with feminism and um, especially during a time when I was younger and how I like feminists were kind of a bad word at one point and I remember thinking about that at the time and being really confused by it um, and just kind of glomming on to that kind of feeling but not feeling I don't think I accurately knew what feminism was because what I was was a feminist <laughs> and so I just really wanted all the I wanted to, I didn't want to let be left behind that's what it is you know it's like I wasn't thinking of it as a I'm a woman and I want equal rights. I never thought it that way. I always just thought, I want to do everything. I want to do that too. And um, sewing, I was just like, yeah, yeah, there's time for that later. I don't really, that's not what I want to do. And I don't want to be grouped with a category that then just doesn't get to do all the other things. Yeah, see, Sydney, I think if someone had said, hey, there is this amazing field called engineering and we see you are really interested in pattern drafting and you might kind of look into that, you know? So I think, you know, that they just didn't have that kind of, they just weren't telling us about it. So, alrighty. All right, so let, let me show you the stay stitch edge uh, to doing your a cur long curve like this. I feel like I'm really dragging you guys through this process. <laughs> I'll start here. And I think, let's see, I feel like pretty consistently I'm going to need to do this at about, I'm going to probably fold it under at about three eighths or so. So I'm going to do my, I'm going to do it at a quarter just to make sure it's a it's a little bit, I think I could do more, but I think I'm going to be safe. This fabric is, is like unraveling before my eyes. So maybe what was three eighths is now only a quarter anyway. So I'm just going to um, put a stay stitch in. I'm not even changing the length, but if your fabric is super, super um, woven tight, I, I would make your length a little longer, your stitch length. Mine is very open weave and very um, pliable. So I'm not going to do a really long stitch length. If I did, it would probably gather up the fabric and I don't want to do that. Although that kind of helps you in another way, you know. That's so cool, Liza. Yeah, I think I did end up taking extra academic classes instead. My high school senior year, I was just kind of like ready to go. <laughs> so I was working full time and then I did it so that I could just get out at 1130 every day. And I had a full time job and it was at a fabric store. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah, when I uh, moved up to Northern California, I decided that I wanted to finally, like part of, part of me when I was going through fashion school, in the back of my head, I wanted to eventually fund my way through environmental engineering with my career. And um, so when I moved up to Humboldt State, I thought that this is it, you know, that's why I moved up there. I wanted to do environmental engineering. Um, and you know, I looked everywhere for a job and I got one at a hardware store, you know, I was like 26. So I had been in the garment industry for probably, uh, I mean like 
eight years, but not eight years solid because, you know, two of them I was, even though I was working full time and kind of in the garment industry, I mean, it was, but it wasn't like a big company. I was in college at the same time, so I was learning. So, um, and then I took a couple breaks and worked on a farm, but then I would go right back into the garment industry right in LA, you know, it was kind of that kind of dichotomy for me. So when I went up to Humble, I wanted to do environmental engineering and yeah, even in that extremely progressive environment, that department was a little less than inspiring for me. And you got to remember, I was a woman transferring in with a degree in fashion design. So. <laughs> Even I would probably raise my eyebrows at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so, um, you know, this is kind of a long stitch. You could break it up and maybe put it in a couple sections. Uh, in fact, I will. I don't really need it down here so much, but I think what I'll do is get close to this, like, where this curve starts going around the neckline right here, and um, that's kind of where I'll start pulling it and you can pull it or not you could just iron it along that edge but you can also pull a little bit kind of like when you're setting in a sleeve and you don't want gathers but you um, want to draw it in a little bit that'll help especially around this curve of the back facing right here just be really gentle don't do too much you don't want this to get bound up you also don't want these stitches to pop later on like if you can remove it, that'd be great. And so now when I go to iron it, it'll be pretty easy to just turn it under that edge right there. <laughs> well, you know, Eliza, I think um, my daughter and I are really different. We get along really, really good, uh, but we're really different. Um, and it's, I, now I can see how hard it is for me to see who she really is because I'm so close to her. Like I see what I see, see what I want to see. And then I wonder, you know, so she is, she's, you know, it's like every parent worries about their kid, even if they're like doing really good. Right. You know, you still have those doubts. And so, cause you're just like, what else could I do? You know, and at a certain point, there's really not much, you know, you just got to let them like do their thing. And, um, I am, my friend put this really well. She, she, she said, you know, um, the difference between a lot of people is curiosity. Um, and I am a very curious person. Um, and, and so like curious people are a certain way and, 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 uh, less curious people are a different way, you know, not bad or good, just different, you know? And so, um, I'm a very curious person. I'm also, though, uh, very uh, determined and ambitious. And so maybe in my ambition, it doesn't lie in I want to be the best pattern drafter in the world type of ambition. It's more like I want to do that and I will go out and I will learn how to do it. Uh, Eliza, it's a st I'm doing a stay stitch. No, she says to do the stay stitch and I think just just turn it under and iron it down. She doesn't really say to draw it, I don't think. I'm just going to, because it does make it a lot easier. And then I'm gonna release it as I'm ironing it, you know? I can look at the directions though. They're right here if you want me to check it out. It's really this like back neck facing right here, because my gauze is like, <laughs> it's got a mind of its own. <laughs> But then, you know, like I'll hear of some of the things my daughter's looking up online and the things she's engaging with. And I'm impressed. Like I don't do those things. So um, she's definitely engaging with the world in a different way than I am. Um, and partly that's her age, her generation. But at the same time, she's curious in her own way. You know what I mean? All right. Let me iron this. We're on the home stretch. Home stretch. 
Okay. Hedgehog, 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 hedgehog. All right, it's going to take me a while to pin this. I'm just going to tell you straight up, you guys. Fast forward if you're in the future. my halfway point. Making a landmark. I'm actually so curious to see what Cricket, all the things she does in the world because the things she finds and the things she's interested in are really interesting to me. So I'm kind of excited to see what she does. Going to fashion design was not a popular, <laughs> did not make me like, I don't know. Like, I know like some people were like, wow, I can't believe, like literally I think people were like, wow, your parents are letting you do that. Like that's the response I think I remember getting. And I remember thinking, what do you mean let? This is what I'm doing. And my mom was not like thrilled. She really wanted me to have a really good job and be able to take care of myself and you got to remember you know she raised me in the early years by herself so she had to support me and that was her experience so she wanted me to make sure and I that is another thing Eliza I have grown up kind of with a fierce need to be able to support myself and I think that that comes from that and it's not it's it's like really hard for me to let it go like I really struggle with it to this day like, you know, you really shouldn't be streaming, Sarah Me. This isn't like paying for itself or making money. So maybe you should do something else. And then I'm like, yeah, but the thing is, good things take time. And they're an investment. And you enjoy this. And you're not like, it's not like you're going in the hole doing it yet, you know? And also, I also think of it like, oh, well, other people pay to do a hobby why can't this be my hobby that I'm doing <laughs> you know I don't have to have a job quite yet so I've had one since I was 15 and so you know I was gonna do whatever I wanted no matter what and I always have and I kind of hope my daughters like that too I don't like this right here I'm hoping I can get rid of that. So my stay stitch is a little too close, so it's showing that. I could get rid of some of it. See, it really wants to fold there. <laughs> Raising Cricket in Humble was also a really good call. I really wish she would have finished her high school there. That's a holistic place. All right, here's the front. It's looking good though. Look at this. I love the contrast, you guys, you know? Did you like auto shot, Megan? Right. Oh my gosh, you have the best username right now. <laughs> I can't quite see chat, but sorry about that. In junior high, we had a um, wood shop. It was like a rotating thing. I'm sure all of you know what I'm talking about. Okay, see, this is, see, I that's just too close. So I really want to get that. This is my outer edge this is my gathering stitch I'm gonna leave that thread out so that maybe I can pull it later and get rid of it I'm gonna have to go a little shallower than my stay stitch though and pull it out you know where'd my pin cushion go
I'm definitely not one of those people that believes college is the only way forward. And I really love having the experience of going to school specializing in something because um, they can they could get me a job a lot easier because that's all they did was, you know, a certain field. And that was pretty valuable. Um, okay, I just need to that way out. Yeah, dang it. I'm, like, I'm gonna iron those sides a little bit. This, this is what I should have done. I'm taking you guys down the longest path possible. And I'm still not even doing it right. <laughs> I don't know why you're here. <laughs> I think like recently is my like when I was laying in bed all weekend, not feeling good, just thinking about all kinds of stuff. I think thinking about this as a hobby. Why isn't this working right now? Wait a minute. Is this really that much wider? Freaking A. I mean, holy carp. Okay, there we go. Um, I, I, cause, okay, so like, people calling what I'm doing a hobby, like, oh, people are so, it's their hobbies. Like, oh, for a lot of you, this is a hobby. This is not my hobby. <laughs> Playing video games is my hobby. <laughs> this is what I go to do all day long, <laughs> right? But at the same time, I was thinking like, wait a minute, what if I did start thinking of what I do as a hobby? I mean, obviously, like, if I think about this, doing this as enjoyment for myself, which is why I started streaming, it feels like I just took all the pressure off. <laughs> and I really like that. I'm um, struggling a little bit and I'm really sorry about that, you guys. The double gods is a pain in the ass. I'll just say it. It's like, it's it's really smooth. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be hard to deal with, but everything's kind of, it's just ever so slightly fluffy. It's like it's pushing against you. When I had to bind something with, uh, and, and someone said, I hope you're not using double gods because the shirt was double gods. It was my example for a class I was teaching. And I was like, mm, why are you saying that? Because <laughs> my uh, binding is double gods. They were like, yeah, good luck with that. They're like, I know you're good at binding, but you're not going to enjoy that. And I was like, well, I'll show you. Tell me what I'll enjoy. And um, heck, if I was going to show why I was struggling with it, but... Holy crap, she was right. You see, it just kind of wants to like, it gets bigger right there where it's cut. All right, so this is obviously gathered a little too much right here. <laughs> just push that that way. Let's start to center here. Doesn't help that I'm rubbing at it, making it worse, and does it? Cause see, look at this. This wants to. Do you see it flaring? I don't know if you can see this, but it's flaring. This is even though this is clipped. I mean, maybe I can clip this some more. Let's try and clip it a little more. I'll look at chat real quick too. Yeah, you know, sewing was an elective. <laughs> yeah, right? Thanks, Eliza. Um, sewing was an elective for me. Um, I guess I should be clear. It wasn't like the school was forcing me to do it. You guys saw me clip this. How did I miss this right here? Um, it was the fact that, um, at, like, so I think in my 
10th grade year, wait, my 9th grade year, they put me in there and I was like, no. And then the 10th grade year, I, same thing happened, but there was nothing else in the time slot because I really wanted the other classes that I was taking. So they were like, well, you know, these are your choices. And there, sewing was by far the one that appealed to me the most. I don't remember what the others were. And um, I was already taking extra classes to graduate, not early, but to do that like abbreviated um, senior year. Yeah, it just kind of wants to turn under and stay down, which is really nice. It does help. It's just like, look at that. Can you see that pushing its way out? I mean, we know we all have that kind of happen, but this is a little, this is on a different level. I mean, it's right next to the pin and it's still wanting to like escape. It's literally like a little hedgehog trying to get out of there, you know? I actually like my high school too. I really love journalism. I feel like my daughter would be really good at that, but she was like, oof, I don't know about all that writing. <laughs> I was like, there's more than one kind of journalism though. I don't understand why high school isn't more about these are all the things you can do in life and just study that. And I want them to learn how to, to manage finances and invest their money and buy a house and pump gas. I don't think they should get academic instruction for like a year. They should get life instruction. And then maybe they would be like, hmm, academics sounds a lot more uh, manageable now that I know how to, you know, live my life. Rants by Ceremy. I'm like, let me show you this really easy way to do this. Uh, this isn't easy. I'm just going to tell you guys. I'm, I'm struggling. Double gauze. I'm glad the last garment I ever made in double gauze was a hedgehog dress. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got some, um, I have that Maya Soda dress over there. The, the, it's a little different kind of gauze though. It seems like there, there's a lot of variety. My mom, yes, she sewed. Um, I, when I was at home sewing, not in class at, at, in school, I used her Bernina. That's kind of why I've always had a Bernina. Mainly because the seam ripper they give you with it is so dang good. <laughs> I always wanted that seam ripper. I was teasing, but it's such a good machine. Um, yeah, and have you heard my funny, my funny story with my mom when, you know, she was pretty excited I was learning to sew. But she also didn't really want to be involved with teaching me very much. I mean, I'm, I'm putting words under her mouth, but she didn't teach me a whole lot. She taught me a lot. What I'm trying to say is she didn't want to fulfill that role, I think. She had two small children, first of all. But second of all, you know, teens and moms and instruction, you, you, you know, you get my drift. She kind of was like, what'd you learn? You know, what are you doing? And if I needed help, she would help me. She was very helpful. But, um... I remember when we were sitting there and she was teaching me something. She says, my family calls me Emmy, not Sarah me. Um, they call me Emmy. And she said, now, Emmy, when I sewing, my favorite tool is the iron. And I was like, oh, really? I, I mean, I was like really into the moment. You know, I was like, mine's the seam ripper. Like, I thought we were sharing. And she, the look on her face, I never forgot. I, I completely remember thinking, oh, maybe that shouldn't be my favorite tool. <laughs> It was cute. But, you know, you guys see me. I'm an unabashed seam ripper. <laughs> All right, here we go towards the end here. 
We're getting there, you guys. Almost there. It's kind of painful just to poke all those threads in there, too, you know? And not trim them first. But uh, that was a never-ending uh, battle. The stay stitch line is kind of nice because it feels rigid and it's kind of nice to fold a, uh, with it. You know, like it feels good. It definitely is helping. It, this probably would have been uh, really much harder without that. Okay, so I like to, when I get to these weird things, like mine is obviously looking pretty bedraggled here. I like to open it up like this and fold it in. Rather than trying to fold it like this, because then you have this like edge. So like if I am flat like this, right? And I just want to fold it in like this. I, I kind of get to this fiddly, I keep fiddling it. So I find if I open it up and then fold it right there, it's a little easier. And I start it off by being already done right there. And then I finesse the rest of it, if that makes sense. Oh, did I tell you guys I ordered a needle shard box? What's next month? It's shirt dresses, right? I am like a sucker for shirt dresses big time. I ordered it the second it came in the email. I don't know which one it is, but it's the So Confident box. Okay, it's probably a lot more uh, I could be doing to get this nicer. Now I know that, that she probably says iron under this long edge and then pin it. Um, I, you can totally do it that way. I, I don't have a lot of luck with that and it's only because I find that then I'm like, oh, am I getting some buckling back here? Am I pulling too far? Because I'm assuming that I am ironing it at the right spot. So I think I might touch iron a little bit here to make sure that it's a little easier to sew. I'm going to start down here. Just kind of give an example of why you get glass pins. <laughs> Is this that spot I was struggling with? Did I just undo it? I think I did. It's hard to get it to bend. Uh, fold somewhere other than that uh, stay stitch line. Like when I sewed this binding on, I was really loose with it because I'm a little worried it'll pull it in, you know? I'm going to try and finesse that. He's able to see chat in a second. Um, I think I probably should have refreshed my ironing of this seam towards the band 
just really ironed the heck out of it. Uh, maybe because of this double gauze just being so foofy. In the name of the hedgehogs. That's why we do it, right? really like my hem junctures to look nice though. Let's look at the other side. Make sure we don't see any trouble spots. What is that right there? All right, let's sew this baby. You guys ready? Yeah, that's cool. Um, I don't know, Louise. It might be. It wasn't a pattern I'd heard of. There were a couple in there I hadn't heard of. Maybe it was. Um, all right. I think I kind of want to remove some of this um, stay stitch right now. I'm just going to get rid of it. Where'd I leave it sticking out? Right here? Yeah. And is it pulling from the top edge? Yeah. Okay, great. I know you don't see people do this very often. <laughs> I want it gone, though. I don't know um, what pattern, Megan. The I or, ordered the next um, needle sharp box. Is it shirt dresses? There you go. That's gone. And then, um, let's remove it down here. Uh, yeah, I think Louise. Yeah, I think so. That sounds familiar. We got the blue fabric, the floral. What do you think? I'm only 
only taking this out because some of it shows and um, I don't want to take it out like here and there it, that would take as long so I might as well do this right now and get rid of this stitch since a part of it was showing a little bit uh, when I was trying to fold it I don't want any buckling in my underband you know so ow getting really poked to death all right let's do it so i think i'm gonna sew the um i'm gonna start from the center back i'm gonna sew all the way around i'm gonna do the edge as well Do I change color? Do I change color? I think I will. I don't have a, a bobbin. Well, that's actually pretty good. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking. Are you looking at that one? Yeah. This isn't, no, um, uh, the needle sharp is. Look at me matching the thread. I never do that either. Cream for life. clock okay this is good but you didn't think it would take two hours to do this me either <laughs> but with fiddly fabric and the centerpiece um, I really want to take my time and we had it, which is nice. Okay. Let's start. I'm going to do the folded under edge first. Um, I kind of want to do the top stitch edge. I think I will. That way I can make sure my, um, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the edge stitching first. So that I can make sure that when I get down to the other part that I can make sure that that's not peeking out, you know. But now I have to deal with all these pins and... Ugh. Megan, we're talking about the needle sharp box. <laughs> I signed up for the next needle sharp box. Yeah, this is the cow's bell for sure. But um, we're talking about the... Um, Next needle sharp box being shirt dresses. Yeah. kind of pushing my fabric like this I like to make sure that the fabric stays perpendicular to that edge there it wants to push it this way a little bit and you get those little wrinkles between your edge stitching and the edge and you know I just trying to set it start it off as good as I can when I get to those spots where the um, seam was kind of rolling to the top I unstitch it, uh, unpin it, and then get it on track. I 
I start at the center back because I like the start and stops to be hidden up there. Alright, when I get to this, I want this to be a little bit better right angle. So I'm going to kind of finesse that a little bit as I go. And then I can finesse this here with my awl. I kind of I like the stitching when you're on the fold edge to be about the same distance away as it is over here but sometimes that's not possible you know you gotta get a little closer on your fold edge sometimes every time I see these little rosy cheeks on the hedgehog I think it's a red pin I'm, I need a bucket for pins right now there you go I'm just gonna set them right there And get these threads into the seam. I don't like them poking out. You gotta be careful with those scissors, man. There we go. I want to stretch out my edge there. You bought two for June? Oh, cool. I don't know which one they did. The, I would never think of the Cali as a shirt dress either, except from that kind of shirt. You know, like, it's a shirt into a dress, you know? I like the traditional shirt dress like with the cinched in waist you know the Dior type of um, influence I just really like that kind of like what I'm wearing now but it's not a shirt dress because it doesn't have that kind of collar oh my gosh you guys this better be looking good I literally feel like I'm easing in the, the gauze right now I want to get to an easy section. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I, this dress is not as hard to sew as I've made it look. It's the gauze, okay? Don't let this dissuade you from making this dress. This dress is really awesome. And I think in like a, um, a lawn or like a fabric I'm wearing now, like a lawn. Um, this is Art Gallery's fabric. Their fabrics are really great for garment making. Uh, a rayon, a chambray, a poplin. It would be so much easier and faster. So this is just this double gauze, just gets very fluffy and it flares. It's like I'm trying to sew cotton candy. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to make a crisp edge with cotton candy. That's like the best way I can probably describe it. Even though you and I both know this isn't like the texture of cotton candy, but it would be like trying to tame that. I feel like that's a good analogy, you know? Not into buttons. I'm gonna have to look up that dress because I don't even remember now what it looked like. I think I was just kind of like, oh, shirt dresses, yay. <laughs> I was laying in bed. This 
looking pretty good. I'm not getting any torquing lines like that. All right, I'm gonna start kind of pulling it like this to help. Can't wait for it to not be under the machine head. Maybe I could bring it a little closer for you guys too. Is that better? So you can maybe see more what I'm doing. Shally for the Cali. <laughs> Eliza, right? Oof. Yeah, I think so too. I think that um, rayon in that gives it would give it a lot more drape. Because you know, shirt is usually usually stiffer, but maybe if you do it in something with more drape, you kind of take the you put the dress into the Cali shirt dress, you know? I think the one I did, that pink one, uh, was also a lawn. I wanna say it was Art Gallery or Andover. Um, same fabric as what I'm wearing right now, but just a different uh, print, you know what I mean? I bought that one, Sydney. I'm definitely making the Linux. Yeah, so um, I bought that in her sale. When that first came out, I was like, hot damn, I want that dress. And then I noticed that at the time, there was no size for me. And so I was like, well, I'm not going to complain about that. <laughs> and then um, now I fit into the very bottom of the range, so... Good news, right? And I really like my Upton. It, the bust doesn't fit me very good, but like it look it fits okay, but the dart's not in the right spot, I can tell. All right, here we go. This is looking really good. It's going it's tricky, but it's going it looks really good, so So see that? It wants to go like this. It's like it's a flower opening up. It really pushes up. I'm going to retitle this stream. Um, watch me struggle for two hours on a one and a quarter inch wide <laughs> tiny piece of fabric. but I will prevail. And if I don't, we'll all forget about it in a week or so, right? And I'll still be wearing a hedgehog dress and I'll be the envy of everybody. Am I getting carried away yet? <laughs> That's what I gotta tell myself, right? The hilarious thing is, I have nowhere to go with this dress. <laughs> like. I'm going to my daughter's graduation tonight and it doesn't even matter because I can't leave the car. <laughs> All right, I think I'm on the easy part now. Home stretch.
I think it would have been maybe a little easier to have started with the un interfaced edge an interfa un interfaced band to the dress but now I was kind of trying th I was thinking of something else I wanted to combat In there, thread. I see you. Why aren't you budging? There we go. My new yard, that's right. <laughs> you know what I'm so excited about doing is making a, a trail on my at my new house. You know? I'm kind of like um I can't wait to be there enough to like see if I it's possible to make like a trail. On the property. I don't know. Maybe there is one and I didn't see it. Sometimes this ed this folded edge doesn't look straight to me and I think it's an optical illusion with the, the little confetti print. I mean sometimes it's not straight <laughs> but um, it's a uh, Kind of messing with my head. to the really easy part. My all's been really helpful. I'm kind of like pushing it down because underneath that seam allowance is kind of pushing up. Oh, night Louise. <laughs> you know, Eliza, I really think it's the double gauze. That's what I was saying. Oh, there we go, Ray. <laughs> I, I mean, I dress like, you know, I don't dress up, but I dress, you know, in street clothes when I come to work here. Street clothes? I don't know. It's funny how wearing a dress seems dressed up to people when I find it more comfortable. Like, uh, literally, like, from a physical standpoint, it's more comfortable than, like, jeans or leggings. Sometimes Jeans are sometimes really comfortable for me. I forgot I wanted to get rid of this thread right here. It's a little extra back tack thread. Get that in there. Oh, that was the easiest I've ever had coming down on a facing like this. Um, usually it'll push it so that it hangs off the edge. And um, when I'm doing a smaller length like this, I'll actually instruct people like, you know, I would make this length of this top piece here a little shorter because the machine's going to push it off the edge and it'll hang off and get really awkward to try and turn under. But um, that went actually pretty good. All things considered, like considering how hard this fabric is. I'm really 
really glad I took the time to make the facing for sure the same width all the way around. I'm done. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Have you made the um the cat the captain the Charlie Captain Sydney? I feel like that would look really cute on you. That little inset seems kind of intimidating. But um, every time I've sewn it, it goes really easily. And that's it. After that, the rest of it's a breeze. So this is why I start on the inside, go to the outside, just in case this isn't as straight. It's happening on the um, inside, not the outside. But here we go. Needs good pressing. Where's that crooked person there? Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's cute. I was going to move the meat, but maybe I'll just do that. There we go. Yeah. Oh, cool, Sydney. Yeah, I like that one. I love wearing that dress. Yeah, this turned out really cute. I love it. And I have my boring little buttons to put on here. We won't look at how good those other ones would be. I don't know about those buttons. Oh, I thought that was sneaking out, but it's hedgehog fur. Okay. Fine. Fine, give me a heart attack. Okay. Eh, maybe these aren't the right buttons. I think, uh... Yeah, I might look for different buttons. But these will work if I have to. There's not the right brown. These are warmer than this. You know? Yay! Thanks for um, sticking with me, you guys. Because that was kind of uh, tedious, uh, you know? Probably would be a good word for that. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me for it. Because... <laughs> It's, it's better with friends, you know. <laughs> and at least uh, those, for those folks when I'm not live, they can fast forward it. Too bad it didn't. Well, I guess you could do um, closed captioning that way and you could see, oh, she said something and then pause. Yeah, I think the buttons are a little too brown. Like they're too, they're too um, reddish brown and this is more of like a grayish I don't know what the heck this color is, you know? So, yeah, so thanks, guys. And I got these, uh, and the nice, the inside's so nice and clean finished with that flat felt seam. And we did the um, French seams in the sleeves. We have our in inseam um, pockets, French seamed. Nice big pleats. Here's the pocket. It's pretty much invisible. Well, especially once I press it, it'll be pretty invisible. See how the back looks. I love that it has a lot of structure, you know, with all the princess seams. I think that's a nice touch. Pleats are not lining up too much, are they? <laughs> 
Yeah, I think so too. I think cream buttons would be good. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to try it on. I may just go, well, I can't get buttons today. I might look again. Maybe I, I need a lot of buttons for this one. Yeah, I'm going to try and get some soon. Why is this, this the, the little hedgehog under there? I can see my stitching right there, but there's something about it that makes me look like it's poking out. You see it? It makes it look very uneven. <sighs> Put on the Beatrice. Um, I don't think so, Eliza, because look at how fat the pleats are. I'm really hoping it doesn't. I mean, it's really not too bad um, without much fullness on there. So that's why I lined the bodice. Oh, cool, Megan. Yeah, we can put it on the Beatrice. Just a second, let me, um, where's that? What's it called? Camera change, here we go. I'll uh, move over there. Well, let me turn this. Oops, I just pressed a bunch of buttons on my keyboard. So hopefully that doesn't do something regrettable. Swivel you. Swivel you. Yep, yep. Do I have pins? I think I have pins here. Oh, let me get the mouse. See how I did with guessing. Not bad. A little bright. It's not too bad though. I love this thing. <laughs> Oh yeah. I need to iron that facing or the button band, I mean. Want to line it up with the waist. <laughs> Let me see. It's about as close as I can get you guys. I really think you got this, Eliza. I did a lot of things that added to this, like lining it and doing it in the double gauze. So here, yeah, so you know, see how full that skirt is? The pleats and stuff. This needs to be ironed for sure, like right there. And it'll hang a little more invisible. There's a weird like little ridge right here on the back. Hangs really nice though. I think my stitching is a little bit not, it's not lining up. I mean, it need to work on that a little bit. Yeah, so, <laughs> I know. Oh yeah, I like this dress. Like I said, I had to stitch it down though. Look at the princess seams. I added a uh, fullness to my sleeve cap. 
Princess seam, center back seam. Still got the pleats. I think it's actually sitting. There, there we go, that's better. Yeah. Very cute. Match is pretty good at the center bottom here. Let's see. Yeah, not bad. Not too bad. <laughs> After I kind of made that facing work, so. Well, cool. Well, thanks, you guys. Um, thanks for, you know, being with me on my journey. I'm excited about this dress a lot. I've wanted to make this dress since she came out with it last summer. I really like her pattern drafting skills, so that's kind of exciting that we finally got to do it. Um, and uh, that this fabric kind of was the one I decided to use, you know. Um, if you like the video, make sure to like it and comment, subscribe, hang out with us again. We love it. And usually it's a little more better paced. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing on Saturday. I will be honest with you guys. I'm still kind of recovering from being sick. So um, I'm not sure I'll stream Saturday. So Oh, cool, Megan. The hinterland will be cute. I actually have a gingham dress cut out over there in this. So I have this pattern I want. I want this Myosota dress. I know a lot of people are like, that's a lot of ruffles. But I did cut out the um, this version. See, I'm really into shirt dresses in gingham. It just won't work on camera. That's why I feel like I can sew it. And it'll be my test fit for making this dress. But I do really love making it. And I'm going to make it out of another double gauze. <laughs> so that'll be good. Hopefully, there's no princess seams. That'll be a lot less fussy, I think. But, um, yeah. Um, but the other thing I kind of want to do is I want to drape on my Beatrice a lot more. And so I think I will do that soon um and no offense if people are like i don't have a dress form i don't have a beatrice dress form and i'm not really down for that um but if you're into like the fitting and drafting and logistic kind of talk um there'll probably be a lot of that because i'm kind of into that it's kind of one of my things i'm into production sewing and i'm into the kind of the engineering side of garment making so so yeah yeah megan you'll find some <laughs> Yeah, so, so cool. So thanks, I appreciate you guys coming. If you see me Saturday, it'll be a surprise and we'll see what I'm making. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next week for sure. So I will see you soon. Have a great rest of your week. Bye, happy sewing. <laughs> Wait, where's my thingy? Okay, there it is. Bye.